Ethan with Telltale Fly Shop, and we're gonna go ahead and get our hook in the vise. This is a size 10 jig hook with a slotted tungsten bead on it, and then we're gonna get started wrapping our thread. We'll just kind of start behind the bead, work your way down to the bend of the hook, and I usually like to make a couple wraps back up before I cut the tag. Then the first real simple material is marabou. This is gonna be dark olive fish hunter marabou. I'm gonna take one strand and you're going to strip it off the side. I just kind of stack and layer them together. This is one of those slides where you don't need a ton of marabou, which is nice because you can kind of conserve some of the strips that aren't as good for bigger patterns and use them on these small guys. So that's about the amount we're gonna use. As you can see, you got leftover for the next one. So two flies for each feather is what you should get, hopefully. And again, this is doesn't have to be a very long tail on these guys. The objective with these ones was to kind of mimic a little one inch gulp minnow. And so we're gonna keep the tail a little short tie that in up to the bead because we do want a pretty level body and cut off the excess and then we're just going to wrap and secure all that down as tight as you can get it and I'm just gonna make sure I get that wrapped down well so we have a pretty level body and then the Next step, which is, you don't have to do this, but I like to, is a little bit of midge flash pearl. The midge flash is very similar to crystal flash, but it has a little bit more movement to it or flow than crystal flash, which is why I end up using it more often than just normal crystal flash. But especially on these small patterns, you don't want to have this real crunchy flash material coming off the side. You could also do flashaboo if you have any of that. So we're going to put one strand in. Going down one side, one strand, coming down the other side of the hook. And then we're going to do our dubbing loop. So if you've never done this, it's pretty simple. You just pull some thread off about three inches and then wrap it around your finger and simply continue wrapping the fly. So now we've got this large loop of material, or it's not material, it's thread at this point. Um, so we've got thread, we're going to take our dubbing loop spinner, you could use a paper clip, um, the tools obviously make life a lot easier because that holds the loop open for our hair's mask dubbing olive. And I really like this stuff because it has a lot of uh, longer fibers to it so you get a little bit more bulk than some other types of, of hair's mask dubbing. And as you can see I've used a pretty good amount to get that bit in there and then simply give it a twist with the dubbing spinner tool and then we're gonna pick out those fibers that are trapped I usually use a little velcro brush but today I got a bodkin And now I've picked out those guard hairs. You can see we've made a little tiny dubbing brush. And you're just going to wrap that up the hook shank. This isn't a complex fly. There's a million that look like it. Uh, the, the strategy or idea is just tail, flash, body material, and a bead. All right, so you can fill in any color that you want. But today, like I said, we are mimicking a little fry or a little bait fish imitation so a little gulp minnow wraps all the way up to the bead i like to do two wraps over the thread before i cut it then i typically do a couple wraps in front just to pinch that together and we'll chop off the remainder of our little brush get everything going backwards or stroked back to the left side and then I'm going to, once I find my whip finishing tool, and we're going to whip finish. I'm just going to do one. The cool thing again with this fly is 
you could do a little red thread and then you've got a little red hot spot right there it looks like little gills flaring that sort of thing but that is it it's a really cool pattern it is pretty easy it's not the end of the world if you lose them and once you get this guy wet or in the water it does really look like a small bait fish um, or again a gulp minnow which obviously a gulp minnow imitates a minnow so I'll show you what it looks like once you've dipped it in some water and that is our look now the marabou really you can see there's hardly anything there when it's wet but in the water that does flare out just a little bit and give some really good movement to the fly but that's it your gulp minnow